So today we're going to talk about how I achieved this uh, shot right here. So every time I post a new animation online, I always get asked, how did you do that? Do you like Blender? Can you show me how you did that? And let me just be honest, I don't really like making tutorials. I'm not really an expert in every single aspect of production. I feel like I know animation really well, but I don't really know the other ends of production super great. So I always just rely heavily on tutorials or other content that I can find online. So I'm just gonna quickly show you today my workflow and how I achieve uh, the types of visuals that I get. And I won't go super in depth, but I will show you kind of the bare bones and hopefully it'll be enough for you to springboard on uh, when you go to make your own content. I'm trying to grow this channel. This channel, if in case you haven't noticed, it doesn't get a lot of views. So if you could do me a favor and just subscribe, share this video around, share my other stuff on this YouTube channel so I can kind of grow my presence here, that'd be really cool. And I wanted to animate something that was really big and heavy. I also wanted to test out a couple of new tools. You know, I'm heading into production on my short film for Magic and Machines. And I just wanted to see if, you know, these new tools would help me in that production. So yeah, let's check it out. It's gonna get more boring now. All right, everybody. So I've sped up some animation tests here. Um, you know, it's important to have reference. You can see in that first clip, I had some reference uh, of myself acting the thing out. Uh, and I just wanted to, you know, start with animating normally in Maya. Uh, that's the first step of this process. Uh, and you can see the various stages of ugly animation blocking and, and getting that weight and, and poses feeling right. Um, and once you're happy with it, I just want to select the hierarchy of this asset and I want to remove the namespace. <clears throat> so I just delete the namespace there and then select the hierarchy. <clears throat> you just want to make sure that you have everything, all the joints and mesh selected. Uh, and then I export this as an FBX. Make sure you have animation included. Uh, you're going to bake down the animation for the selected clip and you export it and it does its thing. Okay, so now it's important that we export a base asset that we're going to use that we can apply all of our animations to. We want to see the namespace to make sure there is no namespace applied to this. Um, when you reference scenes into Maya, it applies a namespace on top of it based on the scene name. So we want to export it with nothing. That's why I removed the namespace in the previous version as well. So I'm making this base marine. You don't need animation or anything on this. You just kind of want that base pose. So we're gonna open Unity now and you can see my scene is already completed. So I'm just gonna remake this uh, roughly for this demo tutorial. Uh, so I'll make a new scene and I like to start with this basic outdoors HDRP scene. It just adds a nice little bit of shadows and it just looks nice. Um, and I'm going to now, as you can see, I have an empty scene. I'm going to import our marine base that we exported and also the animation. Cool. So here is our base marine with no animation. He comes in with the default materials on, which we'll replace as well later. Um, he looks beautiful. The first thing we're going to do now is make a timeline. So I'm just going to create an object, an empty object, uh, call it timeline. And or maybe just call it timeline test, timeline tutorial. There we go. And you want to create a director component on it. This just tells, you know, Unity, uh, you know, kind of the brain of the timeline, the game object.
then grab the clip from the exported animation that we made and toss it in there and voila so we now have the animation fbx playing on the base fbx that we exported this is nice because you know you want to make a base character that you can set up just once you know you want all your materials and stuff to be set up properly on just one asset uh, and then you know if someone else is working on that asset they change it and stuff it will just automatically update and you don't have to reapply it to you know a bunch of different characters great so the next thing we want to do I'm just going to make a ground plane so we can see what's going on. Uh, the, our, our robot marine dude, he looks a little bit small. So we're going to have to scale him up a lot. Whoa, let's make him a giant. And that's probably even still too small. But we'll see how he looks when we get the buildings in there. So I use a bunch of kitbash assets for this. Uh, I bought, I think it was one of the Neo Shanghai assets. I can't recall. But these look really great. And I think what's awesome about Kitbash is the fact that you can export to multiple formats. You know, you have Unity and you have HDRP built in, so you don't have to, you know, play with materials or any that kind of stuff. Uh, it just comes in and it works great. Um, <clears throat> the only word of caution I'll give you is that, you know, these assets are fairly high res, and if you use a lot of them, which we do in our scene, uh, it'll slow down your, your scene playback a little bit. So, um, use them wisely and be careful. So shout out to the Kitbash guys. Thanks for making great assets. This is not sponsored by Kitbash at all. I just uh, really admire the stuff they're doing. Sweet. All right. So we have all our buildings. This is looking good. And now I'm just going to go through and arrange them. So we've got our scene basically set up here. I just kind of threw a bunch of buildings in and I'm going to quickly, I forgot actually a step. I want to apply a material to this dude. So I have some textures here that I forgot to quickly throw on. They're made by my friend Martin, uh, who is a very talented uh, modeler and texture artist. And okay, so obviously uh, one of them is not working on his helmet. So just reapply that helmet material. You can see everything like the emission is going a bit crazy and we'll address that later when we get into the proper render settings. Right now everything is just a little bit a little bit crazy. Um, so I've got my scene mostly laid out here, but I want to start adding cameras. Uh, and how we do that is with Cinema Machine. So we can go to Package Manager, which is uh, how you add you know Unity packages to your project. Uh, it takes a second for me to refresh here, but you can find Cinema Machine. It's I think it's in by default now, but if it's not, you can find it in here. Uh, if I can find it, where is the letter C? Uh, I believe it's after A and then B. Oh, okay, there we go. And I've already got it installed, but you can just you know install it that way. Uh, in the bottom right where it says Remove, you would click Install instead. So then you want to make a, a new Cinema Machine track and drag your main camera into that Cinema Machine track. There we go. So then we want to add a cinema machine shot, which is kind of like your timeline, and you want to kind of time your shots out. Like you know, you can. This is your sequence. You you can edit things around, move things around, change how long cameras hold. And then you click on Create Virtual Camera, and I also need my game view because the game view is kind of what your main camera is rendering. So there we go, and I'm just going to dock it in here. 
so that I can see both the scene and the game view at the same time. And why didn't my camera work here? <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Just to create, I'm gonna try and find an angle that I like first, because wherever your scene view is, that's kind of where your virtual camera, your first camera gets made. Uh, and there we go. So there's some fun features in here that I won't explore today, um, but you know you can. This is all physical based camera. So if you've used a typical camera before, uh, the um, lenses and all that kind of stuff are are similar to what you'd expect a real camera to be. Uh, and what I'm looking for is the film back. Um, it takes me a minute here because <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being silly. Um, physical camera, there we go, and we want to change, there's all these preset film backs, and film back is basically the size of the sensor of your camera, um, so that you can emulate like a film camera, um, or, you know, whatever, an IMAX camera, whatever kind of crazy camera you can dream up, you can, you can put that in here, and it will change the aspect ratio to match. Um... And then what I'm going to do is create an empty game object to uh, have my camera pivot around. This is going to be our pivot point. There's maybe other ways of doing this, but I like to just put cameras under game objects all the time and then just animate that game object um, to pivot around stuff. And it's kind of a, I don't know, hacky way of doing things, but I like it. So I parent the camera under my game object, which is centered on my robot and I add an animation track on that camera or sorry on that game object and I just want to rotate it so that I'm like where do I want to start around here sure and where do I want to end do I want to end it around here I kinda of want him to end when he does his hero pose thing like he's like hi -yah. Um. so there that's kinda of where I want to end it so I'm just going to move it a bit more and open the graph editor here and delete some keys. I'm going really fast guys, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just crazy. And I make these linear because you want to keep your keys, you want to keep your speed kind of constant. You don't want to have a slow in, slow out type thing. And I didn't mean to shorten my animation clip. I meant to shorten my camera track, but I'll fix that. Um, I will fix it, I promise. Oh, I'm going a bit tighter here as well, just because I want that more cinematic uh, um, perspective kind of change. Um, parallax, thank you, is the word, uh, where you get more things kind of whizzing around in the foreground and background. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to quickly add a few more shots here as well. So just to quickly show you the power of sequencing uh, with the timeline. So make a new shot, kind of line up my camera in the scene view first. Where do I want it to be? I kind of want his hand to kind of slap down on that building. And create a new camera there. And yeah, good. And you'll notice here like, hey, where did my dude's hand and fingers, why are they popping off? And this is a thing that for some reason just happens uh, when your character's off screen. I'm not entirely sure why this happens. I'm not a, I'm not a graphics dude, but Select the geo and go update when off screen and just, just enable that so that the character's geometry is never culled. Uh, and it's just kind of optimization thing. And cool, his hand slaps down. Boom, yay. And he jumps, he's gonna jump really high. And let's make a new camera angle here that is gonna be kind of like his landing. Uh, and then I'm gonna use my virtual camera to kind of film these later. The virtual camera is coming up next. Let's just make this lens a bit wider, a 35 millimeter lens. Kind of makes sense. Boom. Cool. And I really wanted to add like flying cars and all that kind of stuff in here. I didn't really get around to it in the original version. I wanted to add destruction and stuff, but again, I don't know. I just kind of, uh, I only have so much time in the day. <laughs> um, but maybe next time. 
you keep on building and that's what's exciting is I keep building uh, as I as I go I keep learning more and uh, faster ways to do things and um, move on to the next thing and now once you have the cameras kind of laid out I realize oh hey my there's a lot of empty spots in the background like I can see the skybox and the horizon line uh, and I think that's never a good thing I want to create a, an illusion of a very busy city so I'm just going to quickly pop in a few buildings and just to fill in those pockets. Um, this is a very quick job that's it's not the greatest in the world, but uh, hopefully, you know, you get the idea. But also really, like that sense of parallax is like the Michael Bay shot where Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are standing up and they're being badasses. Um, I just kind of wanted to emulate that and, you know, you got to have lots of stuff in the foreground, lots of stuff in the background wasn't around to get that shot of that, that sense of dynamic um, camera movement. Cool. Boom. Yay. Fun stuff. Some of the animation in here still bugs me, but again, whatever. This is just for fun. I'm not going to split hairs over this, you know? So I wanted to demonstrate the new virtual camera tools, which I feel like are just as an as animator and storyteller, it's just so cool. Load the app on my iPad so that I'm able to film this camera. What's great about this is it kind of gives you that nice handheld motion that we're all kind of looking for. It's something that you can easily overdo it on, uh, but I just like to have a nice little bit of that organic kind of feel to my cameras when I'm starting to animate. And using a tool like this just makes it really fun. Uh, I'm just going to quickly close this scene view, close tab, just because it's a bit faster. There we go, now we have some nice uh, frame rate. Alright, here we go. So this dude's running, I'm just going to be like, wow, I can zoom in. Holy crap, you're running around. And we can review that by clicking on this button here and watching that go. And saying, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Let's try one more. And we can record again. So you want to start a bit wider, and then you can zoom in a little bit. You can go a little bit lower. You know, maybe we want one that's really camera shaky because uh, we're on a helicopter and this guy's shaking it. So let's try it. Whoa! We're bouncing around. This is crazy. And let's review that. Awesome. Let's say we're happy with that. We can just pop it back into the editor and take a look. And there it is. So it's that easy just to make something that feels organic, easy, uh, and it gives you that creative flexibility. All right, let's talk about lighting. So again, I'm not a lighter. So I use resources, especially this one here from Pierre. Uh, I'll put the link below. It's an awesome tutorial that kind of breaks down how to get the most out of HDRP lighting. Um, and here in this video, I just wanted to um, demonstrate that I, I had this volume here when, and you're seeing uh, some things are giving errors saying like, hey, ray tracing is not enabled right now. I'm just in like a low quality um, preset right now because I just want to get the light position sort of right uh, and throw in the HDRIs and adjust the, you know, some of the fog volumes and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you go through the tutorial, he walks through everything uh, in much detail, much more detail than this that I'll have time to go into today. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show that uh, it's just one directional light for the sun is in this scene. That's the only light and the rest is going to be handled by the volume settings uh, and global illumination, which we will get to shortly. is the uh, ease of use for some of these more high-end features like ray tracing. Uh, there's this awesome webinar that you can find just by searching ray tracing in Unity. It's on Unity's channel. Uh, I just followed that and it's 30 minutes long uh, and I wanted to show you guys just kind of um, the flexibility and the visual upgrade it gives you just by you know taking a few minutes to get there. Um, so this is kind of just the default values of everything in our scene uh, not, not nothing nothing too fancy going on here um, of our little robot dude doing his thing 
Hiya! Alright, um, so I followed that tutorial and I started setting up ray tracing, all these, uh, you know, in, indirect illumination, indirect lighting, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so take a few minutes. I won't walk you through it now. I just want to show you with 30 minutes of tutorials, you can kind of quickly get into something that is customizable and um, easily makes a difference. That's just enabling the volume changes that I've made uh, so that I'm using HDR lights and stuff. And so that's just one part of it. The other fun part of it is going into our preferences and enabling the ray tracing. I, I, I set this all up, this custom thing that's part of the tutorial. Uh, it's not on by default or anything. So if you just, you know, once you have it set up, you can just swap between these levels to get a varying amount of detail. It has to compile a few shaders and stuff. But immediately, I mean, wow, it makes such a difference. You can see, you know, all the reflections in the glasses, in the glass windows here. I just think uh, right off the bat, it just looks really cool without me as a creator having to do anything. Like, I, again, <clears throat> I am not a lighter. I do not really understand uh, how to make cool images. I just do my best. Um, and using these tools that Unity has provided just makes it really easy to do that. Uh, I just, you know, I'm really impressed by this. This is just a couple of days worth of me, you know, animating and laying things out. Uh, and you, you get a really, really incredible image. It's just fun, man. This is just fun to poke around and see what you can come up with. So the last step we want to do is record things out of Unity. Uh, how do I export a movie or image sequence? And to use that, we use the uh, recorder tool, which you can get from Package Manager. I am um, using a new recorder tool. Like There's a new pre-release that you can grab from this blog. They will walk you through the steps. So you can go to Window Package Manager and add the recorder. I already have it, but you would click on it here and go Add. And the version that I'm working with is a pre-release 3.00.2, I guess. Um, and the reason why I'm using this pre-release version is because it has accumulation motion blur. So if I go to General Recorder Recorder Window, you'll see here that there's this accumulation button. And you want to turn that on. I turn my samples to 20. Um, and what that is is just the subframe samples that it's going to render. Uh, so for every single frame it's rendering, it's going to render 20 subframes to calculate um, the motion blur. And I kind of wish that I actually cranked it a little bit higher um, just because you can on some of the fast moving cameras you can kind of see like the the motion blur is a little bit ghosting uh, that's just because the samples are a bit low so yeah you can play with that in your own scenes and, and see what works best for you um, i kind of wish that uh, i've made it a bit higher the other thing about it in here you want to set your frame rate and i always make this manual just because there are some bugs here with the subframe accumul accumulation uh, but that is being fixed um, and I always had it to be, you know, proper film is 23.97, but I just use 24 for now. Um, and you can choose, you know, you can make a new recorder here with uh, different types of um, options that you want to export. You can do image sequence if you want as well. And just disable this other one. You would like it to be, you can choose between PNG, JPEG, or EXR. I use PNG just because. I don't want my image to be compressed like JPEG. Um, so that's PNG or EXR are both some of the highest um, quality images that you can export. And uh, the other thing is you want to set your resolution. So what you want to render at 4K or, or whatever. I only rendered at 1080p for my version of this shot uh, just because the scene is melting my computer enough as is. It's not optimized at all. So rendering at 4K would have, I don't know, I just don't have patience. That's it, you just hit start recording, and it launches the game, and will render your sequence for you as a movie. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you so much guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope you dug the uh, behind the scenes look and how I work. 
If you have any questions, things you want to see, um, please let me know and I'll do my best to follow up and perhaps make another video answering some of those questions. And bye!